Toronto Union Station may not be the biggest, and it may not be the oldest, but many a Canadian agree that it is the most confusing building in the country. So I decided to make a video explaining Union Station, its various entrances, halls, and oddities, all in the hope that you can understand it a bit better. This is all the more important because Union Station is going to keep changing, with big projects going on right now that will be part of that, and so let's take a moment to appreciate the Union of today before we experience the Union of tomorrow. If you're new here, my name is Reese, and I make videos about public transportation around the world. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you never miss a video. The running joke with Union among Torontonians is that it is always under construction, and I have good news and bad news about that. The good news is that, hey, we're getting a better station. The bad news is that there's a lot more construction to be done. Part of that is because you can't just shut down Union Station to do work. Though if we had another downtown station, we might have more options. The other issue is that construction hasn't necessarily always happened in a coordinated way. A bunch of different agencies and organizations are jointly responsible for various elements of the station and the surrounding infrastructure, and because of this, while some parts of the station have been totally redone, like the concourses, this was not done in unison with the platforms, which also need rebuilding, extending the process of modernizing the whole station considerably. If you're not familiar with Union, it plays host to VIA, Amtrak, Go Transit, and Union Pearson Express Airport Rail Services, and is located just south of Toronto's traditional financial district. The best way to start our tour is with the entrances, which there are many of. I've broken the various entrances into categories, which aren't hard and fast, but can be a good way of looking at things. The first way you can potentially access Union Station is via the PATH, the underground walkway network that connects much of downtown Toronto and lets many office workers in the aforementioned financial district easily walk to work from their train underground. Now, there are actually a ton of different connections to the path. I'm actually going to do a future video on the path, so again, make sure to subscribe for that. There's the northwest path to the north corner of York and Front, the west path to the city building, the south path that connects to the TELUS building, and to the elevated sections of the network south to Maple Leaf Square and the waterfront. There's also the direct link to Scotiabank Arena to the south. A relatively new connection also exists heading east from Scotiabank Arena connecting you to CIBC Square South. The final connections are via the TTC station into Royal Bank Plaza and BCE Place. All of these connections are quite useful because you can use them to conveniently cross downtown without getting cold or wet in any weather, while also not having to get onto local transit. The various shops and restaurants in the path can also be a good place to grab something while waiting for your bus or train. There's also the Skywalk, which gets you most of the way from Union Station to the former Skydome, now the Rogers Center, Ripley's Aquarium, and the CN Tower, indoors. It's also a useful path connection to the Delta Hotel and the Metro Toronto Convention Center. Of course, you can also just walk into Union Station from the street. For starters, there are connections at both the northwest and northeast corners that intersect with the path connections. There's also a big modern feeling entrance to the south with a good view of the new train shed, and a Union Station sign that is adjacent to Jurassic Park, the Toronto Raptors fan area. Though the most iconic way to enter the station is via the Great Hall and the glorious restored front facade. Off the street there are also teamways, as they're called, which are sort of weird. The teamways are enclosed walkways on both sides of York and Bay Street, under the rail corridor, that for the most part replace the traditional sidewalks along these sections of street. The teamways running under the rail corridor span the full north-south length of it, and thus provide direct connections to GO services on many of the platforms. You can also use them to enter the main part of the station. Recently, the Bay East teamway has been significantly enhanced to connect the two phases of CIBC Square indoors, the completed south building and the under-construction north building, and I'd love to see similar enhancements made to the other teamways. You may well also arrive on other modes of transit. The TTC has its Union Subway and Streetcar Station at the northeast corner of the main station building, and there are also a few bus routes which head onto the streets nearby, including the Billy Bishop Toronto Island Airport bus. A fairly recent addition has been the new indoor enclosed two-level bus terminal at CIBC Square, which plays host to GO buses as well as most intercity bus services to the city, freeing up the land from the much less nice surface bus station, which you used to need to walk along a platform to access for CIBC Square. North. Now, let's look at the building itself. I'm only going to be talking about the public areas, but there are of course additional private areas for back of house, loading docks, and offices. 
Let's start our tour from the TTC subway station, which is one of my favorites. It's got a big info desk and a circle of gates surrounding the escalators, elevators, and stairs down to the platforms. Previously, that would have been platform singular, but the station has since been upgraded with a new side platform for Finch-bound trains, and a conversion of the previous island platform into a side platform, for use for trains towards Downsview and Vaughan. What's especially nice about this arrangement is that if you're traveling down the university line and transferring to a streetcar, or from a streetcar up the Young line, you get a nice cross-platform transfer that aligns roughly three quarters of the way along the train. The connection from the TTC station into Union happens through a space called the Moat, which resembles a moat around the front of the station. This allows you to walk directly into the lower level of Union from the subway, but you do have to go through two sets of doors, which is a little unfortunate. On the positive side, the Moat is now enclosed by a lovely glass canopy, which means you don't have to get wet on rainy days. An interesting note to make is that at one point you're actually able to drive in the Moat. However, now pick up and drop off happen in front of the station on Front Street. Going along and entering the station from the moat, you end up in either the Front Street Promenade, Restaurant Corner, or most likely the Bay Concourse, directly across from the TTC station. Now, the Bay Concourse is called the Bay Concourse because, well, it's directly adjacent to Bay Street. And what you'll notice when you enter from the subway is that the Bay Concourse has two levels, of which you will be on the lower, along with most of the shops, including a Decathlon, an LCBO, and Sephora. Heading up to the end of the wide space, you'll see a number of escalators which you can use to ascend up to the second level. On the second level, you'll notice abundant Presto readers, though there still should be far more, as well as a small ticketing area and a Tim Hortons. On the north side of this level, you'll find restrooms, while on the east side, you'll find doors to the Bay West Teamway. Throughout the space, there is a significant amount of seating, as well as departure screens for GO Transit, which the Bay Concourse serves. Heading back to the southern end of the concourse, you'll find a connection to Scotiabank Arena. If you've never used GO Transit, it's probably helpful to point out how the departure boards actually work. Essentially, the way you are meant to use GO is to go into Union Station and park yourself at a departure board until a platform is announced. The point here is to discourage passengers from crowding the narrow platforms waiting for trains, which do tend to use the same ones from day to day. Trains are usually announced at least 10 minutes before they depart, but sometimes earlier and sometimes later. The new policy is that the train doors close one minute before scheduled departure. Sometimes a train will depart on multiple platforms, which means that doors will open on both sides. Similarly, a platform marked with a hyphen is both stated platforms. Heading down to the landing where you can access Scotiabank Arena, you can turn 180 degrees to continue to a hall with several food stalls called Foodie Isle. Heading to the end and turning right, we're back in the Lower Bay Concourse. From here we head down and up to the escalators for the Front Street Promenade. There isn't actually a lot here, and space is mostly used to connect between the various concourses. There are some small shops though, such as the wonderful Danish Pastry House. Continuing through the promenade, we pass the station security office and arrive at Restaurant Corner, which has three sit-down restaurants, Amano, Union Chicken, and Worst, all of which are pretty good. There are actually also some additional restrooms. Continuing beyond here gets you to the Union Bike Storage Room and the Northwest and West Path Tunnels. Now, let's head back to the promenade that allows you to walk up the ramps into the Via Concourse. This concourse is mainly used, unsurprisingly, for catching Via trains. Within the concourse, there are various spots to wait for different services, including waiting rooms to the side, and people do line up, though you don't need to. Unless you have a lot of bags, just wait until everyone else boards and then hop on the train line free. While usually this space is not used by GO Transit, from time to time in the past years, or when platform work is going on, GO Trains will sometimes service these platforms. One interesting feature of the concourse is this set of stairs here. If you head down this way, you'll pop out into this hallway, which is one of the newest bits of the station, serving to connect between the Via Concourse and the lower level of the Bay and York Concourses. In the future, it's going to have tons of shops and a market, but in the meantime, these facilities are still mostly behind hoarding. From here, let's head west to the York Concourse. On our way, we'll see another set of restrooms before popping into the food court. This is the food court, and the main one for the station. We actually made a video when it first opened years ago. It's generally quite busy, with lots of decent places to grab a bite, and another Tim Hortons. No comment. Uh, these lower levels of the station were actually excavated while the station was still being used above, which is quite an impressive feat and a big reason why construction took so long. Now, head up on either side, and you're in the main upper level of the York Concourse, which is lined with different shops and food places, including the wonderful Uncle Tetsu's, a Starbucks, as well as a McCafe. 
There's also another set of restrooms which are probably the biggest in the whole station. Like with the bay concourse, you'll find a ton of presto readers and departure boards, as well as a giant set of ticket windows and the lost and found office, as well as an area where pop-up Metrolink stuff sometimes happens. As with Bay, at the western end of the York Concourse you can actually access the York East Teamway, and to the northern end you can access the Restaurant Corner. To the complete opposite end of the York Concourse, and at a roughly symmetrical corner in the Bay Concourse, there's access to what is known as the South Concourse. At the moment, the South Concourse is being completely rebuilt, and when complete, the area will have a couple wide dedicated platforms, which will sit over the long open space that spans from the York Concourse all the way to the Bay Concourse with doors in the middle for accessing the Via Concourse. You can also use connections in the South Concourse, which are changing during construction to access 25 York, the TELUS building, as well as Scotiabank Arena, which has this giant open hall at its north end that the various entrances and path connections come together in. If you're continuing south in the path, the connection isn't great and involves a bunch of stairs right here. Now, walking down the hall, you can also access the Union Station bus terminal by taking the escalators at the east end up and crossing Bay Street into the CIBC Square development, which is quite tightly linked with Union. The bus terminal, as mentioned earlier, has two levels, and each has several zones which you'll be told to wait in for your bus, as well as tons of seating. There are also more ticket windows here, restrooms, and space for more future food vendors. There's also a street entrance from Lakeshore Boulevard on the lower level, which is sort of the farthest south point in Union Station. Before we return to Union proper, CIBC Square has a little appreciated gem that's easily already one of my favorite places in Toronto. Returning to the east side of the bridge over Bay Street and taking the escalators up brings you to CIBC Square Park. Not only has this park been rarely busy in my experience, but it provides great views of the rail corridor and the skyline, with benches, trees, and nicely manicured lawns, as well as cool public art, and the park itself is going to get a lot larger with the second phase of CIPC Square. While Toronto may not be getting Rail Deck Park anytime soon, this almost makes up for it. Now, one thing we didn't touch on is the platforms themselves. At the moment, Union has around 10 different platforms for Go and Via, most of which are quite notably narrow islands, and some of which even have a curve along them, a relic from accommodating old large elevators used for freight. Many platforms are also extremely long, longer than even a 300 meter 12 car Go Suburban train. The reason for this design is mostly historical, from the days when steam trains carried both mail and passengers, and of course didn't really operate at high frequencies. That being said, the long platforms still prove useful for long distance services with massive trains like the Canadian service to Vancouver. Fortunately, there is a plan to progressively fix things by filling in some tracks to create substantially wider platforms, as well as adding some terminating bay platforms, something that the work going on in the south concourse will enable. This will allow higher service frequency, much enhanced safety, and likely waiting on platforms for trains, a rare privilege that doesn't really exist at Union right now. That higher frequency service will of course be enabled by electrification, which can just barely fit under the historic bush train shed that exists on either side of the station. By comparison, the train shed at the center section of the station was removed and rebuilt as a tall modern glass canopy. Now, heading back down into the Via Concourse, we have a few more areas of the station to check out, by heading directly north from the concourse. Here we come to the Great Hall, which is easily the most epic transit space in the country with the inscriptions, flags of the provinces of Canada, and the dramatic high ceiling. Within the Great Hall, we mostly have amenities aimed at via rail travelers, including check-in counters, a dramatic analog clock, some seating, and a big departure board. You'll also see stairs here that you can use to drop into the Front Street Promenade. But wait, where is the Union Pearson Express platform? As it turns out, the Up Express is not really part of the GO Transit concourses, despite being operated by the same parent agency, Metrolinx. Instead, UP has its own station off to the side. This confuses a lot of people. To access the UP station, we walk west to the Skywalk from the Great Hall, passing the VIA and TD passenger lounges, more restrooms, and a tourism office. The UP station is actually built directly into the side of the Skywalk, directly adjacent to some access doors to Platform 3, the northernmost side platform at the station, opposite of the aptly named Station Street, which sort of acts as a pickup drop-off area. The Up Express station actually has its own restaurant upstairs and cafe downstairs. It's basically fully self-contained, and it's also one of the only places in Canada where you can find platform screen doors, and possibly the best place within Union Station to watch trains. With the Up out of the way, I think it's valuable to step back and take an overview look at Union's layout, which essentially comprises of three main spaces. 
the upper level, which is a near complete loop formed by the Upper Bay Concourse, South Concourse, Upper York Concourse, and the Front Street Promenade. The lower level, which is shaped a bit like a giant L, running from the subway to the escalators, up to the Upper Bay Concourse, and then across to the Via and York Concourses. And the Via Concourse at the center, which sits vertically between the two other spaces and is actually only connected in three main places to the rest of the station, at the north, south, and center. Of course, this is just the union of today, and there's still a lot of change coming to the facility. For one, the redesign of the platforms will make them part of the space. Right now, the platforms are really just an interstitial place you temporarily travel through to get to a train. But in the future, actually waiting on the platform will become regular, and perhaps even benches and other minor amenities might be available on them. Despite this, it's hard to imagine that the station won't become even more congested. It's already busy during much of the day, and with GO Transit planning on operating several times more service, that congestion is only going to worsen, making the prospect of new concourses, or entirely new shoulder stations, attractive. More shops and amenities are coming to the station, and these will make it even more of a destination in its own right, as well as an even better place to meet with friends or colleagues. As part of the Waterfront East Streetcar Extension program, which I made a video about recently, plans have been drawn up to further expand Union's TTC station, upgrading from the current one curved streetcar platform to four straight ones with bypass tracks, as well as additional entrances directly into the Lower Bay Concourse. This will only serve to enhance the capacity and connectivity of the hub. There's also going to be a lot more people in the area, thanks to massive residential development on the waterfront and increased office development in the Central Business District. Potentially Toronto's tallest tower at One Young is being built right now just a stone's throw away. Meanwhile, a number of new office towers are either being built or proposed on sites directly adjacent to Union, which will only make it a more convenient transportation hub. Suffice to say, while Union Station is definitely confusing, that's only because it is the keystone in what is probably one of the most dynamic, important, and fast-growing neighborhoods in North America, and it's only getting bigger.